Okay, okay, hello, hello, hello. I am just gonna say now that I am quite ill. I came off moonery and my whole nose is bunged up and because I now have an editor, I send things him a little bit in advance. So I'm recording this literally like just after I finish moonery and oh, oh, I'm so ill. I got my hair done by the way, do you like it? Mm, so lovely. This is literally the same hair out of the hairdresser. So once I've given it a wash, it'll look completely different probably because that's always how my hair is. So today I thought I'd do a little video on how I found my personal style because it's been a real journey for me. I've always loved fashion and I've loved style, but I've not been that engaged with it or I've been very influenced by other people because if you don't know, I'm a type nine on the Enneagram, which means I am just heavily influenced by other people. Like I kind of blend and it's taken me a really long time to even work out who I am, let alone all the other like tertiary stuff in between. I would say I had a better idea of my style when I was like 14, 15, 16. It was kind of more about the music I was listening to. I was listening to a lot of indie bands and that really had a big impact and I was really creative with my style. I thrifted loads of stuff, found loads of stuff secondhand and it just really, it went together for me. I would say, things fell apart, maybe at uni. I was really inspired by the people I lived with and I took a lot from their personal styles. However, I really did lose my own. And then when I left uni, I was just like, what am I doing? I was just buying things and doing strange things with my style and I didn't, I'd, I'd look at something and I'd go, you look like something that I would love to wear or that's an outfit I want or that's a style I really admire and I follow you for that but I could never work out how to emulate it. And I think lots of people have that problem as well. I wasn't brought up in a family where style or fashion or interiors was like a priority. It really wasn't something I was taught or something that I was surrounded by growing up. It's interesting now to try and like adjust my perspective as I'm an incredibly visual person as well. So if you have that kind of a problem as well, which I'm sure loads of people have, if I was in that boat, there's gonna be so many people as well. And if you're one of them, maybe this video will help you find your personal style. These are the things I did, and then these are some tips as well that might help. So I was quite aware that I wasn't really sure of even who I was, let alone what my style was, around like 2016, I'd say. And then what I decided to do was off the inspiration of my friend Anna was start a capsule wardrobe because I didn't want to keep buying these random things that actually didn't make any sense in my wardrobe or I'd just buy something for an event and then I'd never get any use out of it. I'm sure you can relate to that. When you go to a party, you're like, shit, 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 I need something for the party. You buy the dress for the party or the skirt or the top. You don't know how to integrate it into your everyday outfits, so you just don't bother. Maybe don't bother is a bit harsh. You don't know how, so you just leave it in the corner of your wardrobe. I started my capsule wardrobe process by following the steps on this blog post, which I will link below. It is very, very helpful, and it's one that Anna recommends herself, or did recommend at the time, for helping you find your capsule wardrobe. I would also recommend this book, The Curated Closet. This is by Anishka Rees, and it's great. It's really, really helpful. Loads of tips on how to curate your closet, and also an edited life by my mate Anna, but I think this is the most comprehensive guide you could find, and it's really easy to follow, really clear, and it allows for experimentation and creation without the limits of a capsule or 38 items or 10 items, you know, it, it gives you a bit of freedom, which I think is really important because I think it's quite unrealistic to approach a very limited wardrobe concept when you yourself don't really know who you are style-wise. The main things I remember doing when I started this capsule wardrobe was I went through all of my clothes, I put them all on the floor, I didn't even have room on my bed, and I went through everything and decided whether it was actually something that went with what I liked looking at. And the where I found inspiration, and I'll talk about this in a bit, was from like a lot of, let's say, Instagrammers and Instagram posters. So I knew, I had not an idea of what I liked looking at. And it was very like black and white and minimal and clean cut. That's kind of all I really knew. I knew I liked really like utilitarian industrial cuts and I knew I liked black and white and gray and that's it. <laughs> Knowing that, I went in and culled so much of my wardrobe. I must have given away at least half of it. And there was so much stuff that was new as well, which was really sad to me. And a lot of stuff went to my sister. But things like, I just owned like four bright pink things. I think I have a clip of me saying that in my original capsule wardrobe video. But like, I don't need a bright pink fur coat. I will not wear that. So I was now down to very, very few items. And what I mean by that is, it's enough just about to wear day to day, but not really enough to make outfits with. I owned jeans, black jeans, and I owned t-shirts. And that was like, <laughs> all I kind of had that I was like, I know I like this and I know I wear this all the time and I know it fits with what I love wearing. I had all these items and then I made a list of all the basics that I was hoping to purchase 
over time. I didn't, there's some people who are able to be like, I could just go out and buy five items. I was not in that financial position and I don't expect many people are. So I made this list and I was like, okay, I'm gonna just actively hunt like over a long period of time for some of these things. If something crops up in a sale or something crops up and just looks incredible that fits in within those guidelines, that's good. I'm sorry if you can hear washing up in the background. That is my housemate, but my camera's about to die, so I need to continue. So I just kind of made a long run plan. I didn't make a short term one. I was just gonna see what would happen. And also I was aware my style was gonna keep evolving. I didn't wanna just go out and purchase a bunch of stuff because that's not helpful. So there was another step that was actually really important to me, and that was to abolish my ingrained internal rules for what outfits look like. That might sound really weird, but as I said, I didn't get brought up in like a fashion conscious world, like at all. I just had like internal rules, like a coat always looks like a coat. I never had any jackets ever growing up. And for shoes, you have two pairs of shoes. That was it, like a trainer and a boot. And that was, and a sandal actually. And that was kind of what I thought of as outfits. And you always had to wear a jumper over a top or a cardigan over a top. You could never just wear a top and a jacket. I'd had all these like ideas in my head. Oh, and only, only one bag one bag was it. I had lots of concepts of just like ingrained fashion rules that didn't really exist and I had to realize what they were and break them down and the way I did that was using the inspiration that I saw day to day on people, on Instagram, on influencers, on Pinterest. I used those visuals to work out and look not just at the item that I liked that they were wearing but how they composed an outfit because I had to learn new rules. Number three and this is the easiest thing I think you can integrate early on into when you look at your wardrobe and you've cleared it all out is accessories. I only really owned earrings. I also bought a belt really recently. I hadn't owned a belt until now which blows my mind because I have a really weird hip to waist ratio. Why was I not using it as a great accessory and as something cool that would just help me. Also socks. I only own trainer socks and that's silly because sometimes in winter you need your ankles covered but you like crop trousers. Socks are really important. Those are just three examples. You might have a hundred others depending on your personal style. But accessories are cheap generally and quite easy to use to freshen up something that you already are wearing. So I would say if you're like kind of on the lower budget end of all of this and you're thinking like what can I actually do to help once I've cleared out my stuff? accessories. Okay, now we get on to inspiration. Inspiration was a really important part of rebuilding my wardrobe and still is today. As I said earlier, it's always evolving. So always having like visuals of what you really like helps to help you mentally be creative in what you're gonna buy and what you're gonna wear and how you're gonna put everything together. I use Instagram saved what they call collections. I have a style collection, Pinterest, I have a Pinterest board. I go on there maybe once a week and just see what comes up on my Pinterest page. And then I also look to my friends because my friends inspire me so much in what they wear. I look to people on the street, especially if I'm in a big busy area like the center of town, Oxford Circus, because also there's lots of environments that I don't know how to dress for. I still don't really know how to dress for like parties or going out or black tie or anything like that. So I look to what other people are wearing to make me work out what I like. And then often I actually do go up to people and ask where they got their thing from because sometimes you see something and you're like, wow, that's incredible. My friend once had something from Aldi <laughs> that was the coolest jacket. And I was like, where'd you get it from? And he was like, Aldi, very cool. I also follow other influencers that really inspire me and they kind of show me how my style is shifting over time because I'll unfollow people, then refollow people. And I can see what I do and don't like within a kind of long trend of someone's wardrobe, which is so helpful. And again, can't emphasize this enough, look for their outfit arrangement. Don't just look at the like si singular pieces in an outfit. Although you might be like, oh, I love those loafers, they're incredible. Think about the whole way they've put the thing together because that's something that I really, really struggled with. <laughs> I didn't ever think you could pair a coat with loafers. Now I know you can. It's great. Another really important point is that it doesn't happen all at once. And you know this, I've reiterated this 101 times, but fashion's a process and style's a process. And we don't wanna be rushing it because it can cause excessive waste. There can be lots of problems. You don't know how sustainable your clothes are. You don't have to be a sustainability whiz. I always think like, just do what you can, like within your means. And you know, you don't have to like fight for every cause on the planet. That's kind of impossible without feeling excessive levels of guilt. But just be aware that you can take your time. It can be a slow process and that's all good. Even now I've created my capsule wardrobe, very occasionally I will buy things that are impulse purchases and there are a few of them that I've just had to give away because they're just not 
not right for me in whatever sense they don't look nice on me or they don't fit me right or whatever and I really regret it every time the more time that you spend observing your taste on like a really low level the more you will understand it as a whole thing and not just oh right now I really like neutrals you'll be like ah I've always liked neutrals in these specific ways and these textures and yeah you'll get it and for me personal style extends way beyond fashion and I think that hopefully is a given but there's so much to me and I have like save Pinterest boards and the save collections on Instagram for loads of things including interiors, homeware, what else do I have it for? Oh my god, beauty looks that I'm gonna start doing hopefully or mimicking, trying to, I don't know. And a whole host of other things, even just like like cocktails and like decorations, visuals for my Instagram, so that, because I'm just so easily led and like so easily influenced by trend so I need to pull myself back in and be like, no, what is actually something I like? A collection for visual reference for when you forget yourself what you like is really important. And finally, this is such an obvious point, but it's important to reiterate, your life does not depend on it. So it's just fun and it's really nice to find your style and it's good, but don't obsess over it. Like it's your own thing and you can enjoy it in your own pace. On saying that, don't let anyone shame you out of feeling a certain way or caring because it's important to care about what you look like individually. That's how you express yourself, that's creative. I've definitely been on receiving ends of both of those, of people that obsess um, and I start obsessing and then people who are like, why do you care about that thing? It's so fickle, it's so lame. It's not fickle, it's not lame, but it's important to keep a balance and keep it in perspective. Anyway, Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this little video has given you a bit of help. If you enjoyed this video, please check the cards and see if there's another one you would like to watch from my channel. I make very similar videos about beauty, fashion, lifestyle, living in London, all sorts of fun things. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I will see you in... Oh, that's so annoying. So close. So 